Fawn is one of the most important expressions in all of verse. Why? Well, let's consider this scenario. I have a function called initialize enemy that simply sets up an enemy. When we initialize this enemy, I also want it to start chasing some player. So we create this chase player function. Since chasing a player will obviously take some time to complete, the chase player function will be an asynchronous function. However, the initialize enemy function itself will be immediate. So naturally, this means that I'm not able to call the chase player function inside the initialize enemy function. But what if we absolutely had to or wanted to? Well, for that, we can use the spawn expression. If we type spawn here and pass in the chase player function, either like this or like this, you'll notice that we no longer get any errors, which implies that we can call the chase player function from within initialize enemy. But how? To understand this, we need to remember that functions that are immediate can only run immediate code since it's expected that the function completes within a single frame. Luckily for us, the spawn expression is actually an immediate expression whose job is to simply begin an asynchronous function. As a result, this lets us use spawn inside an immediate context to call an asynchronous function, which will begin executing its code immediately. But why is spawn an immediate function? I mean, we're still calling an asynchronous function, right? Well, that's because spawn is the first and only unstructured concurrency expression inside of verse. We know that any task created using unstructured concurrency can run even after the parent function has completed. In our initialized enemy example, these three lines of code are run immediately and sequentially. The same also applies to spawn here. The spawn expression simply starts the asynchronous function and that's it. It immediately completes. It doesn't have to wait for any function to complete. As a result, any expression following spawn will also be immediately executed without having to wait for however long the asynchronous function would have taken to complete. This means that this entire body will run and complete within a single frame. And due to the unstructured concurrency nature of spawn, the function started inside will continue running even after this parent function has completed. Now this seems promising, but it can be a bit of a double-edged sword if used improperly since I'm now the one responsible for canceling whatever function I invoke with spawn. For example, if I call spawn on a function that runs some sort of infinite loop, I better make sure that my loop has some way to finish since it would otherwise run forever because it won't naturally be canceled. And unless you want this loop to run forever, this can be the source of unexpected bugs if you're not careful. Now, spawn isn't limited to just immediate context either. You can call the spawn expression inside of a suspense context since it's just another immediate expression. This could be useful if you have two asynchronous functions that you want to run at the same time. Let's say I want to move two cubes at the same time using move to. Normally, if I call the move to functions back to back, the first move to will suspend the code execution until it finishes moving the object, and only then will the second move to begin to execute. A potential solution to this is using spawn for the first move to, which means we only have to wait for spawn to complete, which as we've just discussed, will complete immediately. Thus, the second move to will start pretty much at the same time as the first move to. Now there's a much better and proper way to achieve this, but we'll explore that in an upcoming video. The last thing you should know about spawn is that it returns a task object corresponding to the asynchronous function called inside. You can simply think of a task as a representation of an asynchronous function. Specifically, it's used for representing the progress on said function. The only thing you can do currently with this task object is call await on it, which will simply suspend the code execution until the task completes. So as an example, if you go back to the move to scenario, we can assign the spawn expression to a variable called spawn task. Then after the spawn expression, we can do spawn task dot await. By doing this, we suspend the code execution until spawn task completes, which will happen when the move to completes, since that's the function that corresponds to the task. Also, I should know that currently, spawn can only start one function at a time, so if you need to start multiple functions in the background, you're gonna need multiple spawns. So in summary, spawn is an immediate expression that starts a single asynchronous function, and it returns a task object corresponding to the function that was called. Anyway, that's it for spawn and unstructured concurrency. As always, I hope this was helpful and yeah.